Hello there, and welcome back to the SWTVC podcast, the audio home of the SWTVC crew and the ongoing push for the continued existence, expansion, and success of the heritage scale of Star Wars collecting. I'm Evan, and today I am joined by my teammate, John, a.k.a. at The Vintage Concepts, and we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, this is the first podcast episode of 2024, but we did do a live stream at the beginning of January to celebrate uh, the launch of a certain little uh, initiative that we've got going on. Um, yeah. So you know what? Uh, let's just talk about that real quick. Yes. So uh, in doing this, we are procrastinating doing our March Madness stuff. But uh, submissions for your top 25 close January 31st at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so be sure to... That's a at the time of recording, that's about a week away, a week way, excuse me, I had to say it, but uh, so you have less than a week to submit your list unless you're listening to this podcast after that, in which case, how are you listening to this podcast, but you haven't heard about uh, March Madness top 25 submissions, I have no idea. Uh, you you do you, boo, live your life. Um, if you have already submitted your lists, but want to edit after, you know, the recent pipeline reveals, which everybody thought we're going to completely change the world and reveal everything we've ever wanted, uh, spoiler alert, they did not, but if you want to edit, you can. <laughs> Uh, you should have gotten an email after you submitted the first time and there's an edit feature you can access through there. Or you can submit another list using the same email address you already did. Evan and I, uh, in about a week, will be going through uh, the list to purge duplicates and other mishigas and shenanigans soon enough. So there is that. Man, you know, it It always feels like it's farther away than it is. But when you just say, yeah, yeah we're going to be going through and tallying stuff up starting in a week. Um, my heart sank. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to get, uh, got to get you on this podcast edit within the next yeah. week. Yeah. Because yeah. before we completely uh, get lost <laughs> in the, in the data here. Yes. Uh, it is that time of year where we are light on the SWTVC podcast. We've been doing live streams and really focusing our efforts on March Madness. But fear not, the show will hopefully be back into a slightly more regular release schedule, whatever that means for us, uh, after March Madness is done. Um, Stay tuned. We'll have more information on the actual March Madness voting, obviously, uh, closer to the event in, you guessed it, March. So uh, <laughs> check out our Instagram page for that. Um, yes. Um, did you already mention that at the time of recording this, we have about a thousand list submissions so far? Of course, that's before we've scrubbed, uh, yeah. duplicates and whatnot, but. And, uh, so far, yeah, it's not just one guy submitting nothing but Pong Krell a thousand times, a few times, but not quite a thousand. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we'll have a final number once we uh, clean everything up, but it's, it's amazing to see uh, that many submissions, uh, which is the most we've ever gotten. So that's. Thank you, everyone who has submitted, and thank you to everyone who has forgotten to submit. Uh, so please do that uh, now within the next week <laughs> so we can get you on there. I uh, absolutely am thrilled to see all of the enthusiasm and engagement uh, across the community for this kind of stuff. It's it's fun every year. Um, so it means a lot. It's cool. I, I like seeing that stuff. So yeah. um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, speaking of enthusiasm. Uh Steve Evans has rejoined the Star Wars brand team, and he's still on the Marvel team too, correct? Yes, he can do it all, folks. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you know him as Mr. Stevie18 on Instagram, maybe, but it's great to have such a passionate, engaged fa Star Wars fan back on the line uh, once again. And thankfully, uh, Emily and Chris are still working on the design side for Vintage Collection. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it's a sign of great things to come. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that he also didn't shy away from folks that were, you know, addressing some concerns that people had when he came back, not about him in particular, but just, you know, he's not, he's not as squeamish. Uh, he's, he's very, uh, get into the, get into the ditches and, you know, wade through all of our fun yeah. internet stuff. So uh, yes. I appreciate that. He's a brave guy for doing that. Um, yeah, God bless him. There have even been a couple of times when he was on the Marvel line that he would like, you know, Target wasn't putting up their pre-orders or whatever, and he would get in there and kind of see what was going on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's great to have him back in a more official capacity, you know, so. Absolutely. Welcome back. Yeah. And, you know, this kind of ties in, speaking of things that are shared across Marvel and Star Wars now, uh, the Epic Hero series has made the jump from just being a Marvel thing to also being a Star Wars thing. We are 
not going to fully be getting into this today. Uh, Tyler, please forgive us for even talking about it. But since they are a new three and three quarter inch Star Wars figure line, they are at least worth mentioning on this three and three quarter inch Star Wars figure podcast. Uh, John, I know you and I both actually have the uh, $15 deluxe uh, Sabine, Ren, and Paz Vizsla. Uh, we got those from Entertainment Earth, although... Uh, mm-hmm. Earlier today on my way home from work, I saw them at Walmart. So oh, wow. that's cool. They exist uh, in stores. Who knew you could find things? Wow. But, that's possible. Yeah. And so, it's yeah. in, Hasbro still has not uh, officially acknowledged their existence. When people were asking about them in the last Q&A a month, a month or so ago, uh, they're like, yeah, we can't even get into that. Now they're showing up. So uh, maybe one day we'll hear more about this line. But we're telling you about it now. Yes. The only thing they did say uh, was that these figures, uh, this line does not pull from the collector lines budget. It pulls from mm-hmm. the kids budget, which is similar to what mission fleet did. Um, yeah. so separate budget, it's not taking away from TVC resources or so we're told. So we'll yes. See. And, uh, Tyler's not here, but we can tell his opinion anyway, which is, you know, nobody wants, you know, three and three quarter inch figures to look bad or to be low quality or to take away from people's perception. Uh, you know, the vintage collection has come such a long way in the past few years, especially that, uh, you know, you don't want to have people see these figures and say, oh my gosh, these Star Wars figures are all low quality or whatever, you know, yeah. but um, I do think it's a good way to get kids into the line. Uh, it's nice to have a $15 option of these characters who are otherwise only available for $28. Um, we'll, t- we'll get into that later, but uh, we both have Sabine and Paz only. Or do you, did you get a few others at Walmart today? I did not. They, uh, I noticed again, like we keep seeing, I keep being reminded of things. I saw that we have pegs for them now at both of my Walmarts, uh, but there's, there's character specific pegs and it looks like they're only going to have Vader and Mando right now not the whole wave which is odd to me and i noticed they did the same thing with the uh, walmart did the same thing with the marvel ones where they only stocked uh sam wilson captain america and iron man and none of the others from that wave which was odd uh the super duper I, heavy hitters they're focusing yeah, on them it seems like but yeah i interesting <laughs> it's off to a smashing distribution start so uh <laughs> killing it it's a star wars line for sure um yeah yeah, I I don't know. I have been I've been collecting the Marvel ones, mm-hmm. and I like those quite a bit. Those are a lot of fun. Of course, they are far simpler than what we've come to expect from TVC. Uh, you know, fewer joints. Uh, you know, they've they've they're articulated. They have elbows, but they don't have like wrists and whatever. But the Star Wars ones bafflingly are five POA, but still under the same Epic Hero Series branding. Yeah. Uh, I I would have to hazard a guess it's because of the license fee. Someone mentioned to me that it know. was maybe ha- having to do with the the paint and that the Star Wars ones require more paint than the Marvel ones. And that's why they sacrificed articulation. But I'm not quite sure I buy that because I look at things like the Stormtrooper, which has two colors. It's white and black. <laughs> that's it. You know, there's not there's not a lot it's of expensive. deco on these things in general already. <sighs> it averages out to be yeah. about the same amount of colors across the Marvel and the star Wars ones. So I don't know, man, I did notice that the, the deluxe star Wars ones have a lot more accessories than the deluxe Marvel ones so far. So far, Marvel only has Hulk and Thanos as the deluxe $15 price point figures. And, right? No, those are actually, um, I believe those are still in the single card mainline ones. The deluxe okay. ones are, uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America with a bunch of build up accessories. Okay. And uh, a different Iron Man, which is fascinatingly a new sculpt, uh, as opposed to the one that's on the single card, which I was shocked by. But anyway, enough about Marvel stuff. But so anyway, so clearly I have no idea what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> uh, you know, it'll be nice to get more of these figures kind of out there and see what people are thinking about them. Um, yes, and I posted size comparisons as well uh, on my uh, Instagram page at Mile High Ground. Sorry for the shameless plug. Um, John, you wrote down here in the notes. Thank you. Uh, Sabine is a bit taller than her TVC counterpart. Paz is the exact same size as the TVC figure. So yeah, because they're branded as four inch figures, um, Mm -hmm. but they are they are seemingly in scale. I think maybe with Sabine, it's just a case of, you know, she's a petite character. They wanted to size her up a little bit to, you know, give her some more action bulk. I don't know. Yeah. But um, like they used to do with uh, Leia in the Power of the Force days. But um, (laughs) I don't know. But I. 
when I open these with their, uh, you know, their action features, you know, I know they're not collector quality, but is it possible to feel nostalgia for like the 2016 era figure lines already? Because that's what I felt. I want to say yes, uh, John. Yeah. It is. I've, I'm going through a bit of a basement renovation, so I've been moving things around and putting things on sh uh, from shelves back into boxes, which includes a lot of my 2015 to 2018 five POA stuff. Which again, yes, I know five POA not okay. Blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, <laughs> I did actually start feeling that nostalgia for those, and I was like, oh yeah, okay, I get it. And looking at them because that is you know 2015. 2014, 2015, 2016, the run up to TFA. That's when I jumped back into collecting mm -hmm. and I was buying all these things and getting really excited. So it was fun to kind of re reminisce about my uh, jumping back onto the Star Wars bandwagon, you know, back when I had a future ahead of me with income and money and maybe owning a house. <laughs> and now I don't have any of those things. I just have Star Wars stuff, but that's fine. That's all you need. Yeah. But so. uh, yeah, I know. Of course, got to say, we would never want these to replace TVC, but no, you not know, in the slightest. So I'm not saying that at all. So, no. so save your comments until the end of the episode. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's That's the it best is part nice. about a podcast, John. We're talking at them. They can't say anything. I, know, I don't back. have to read their comments like on a live stream. <laughs> Thank God. Phew, the nightmares, they're finally over. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll discuss this more at another time since today we have to get deep into the minutiae of Mandalorian armor. Yes, yes. Let's wipe our hands of the blood of TVC that we've spilled by supporting a competing line <laughs> and jump into uh, reveals. So uh, we, of course, have the live stream that happened. But before we jump into that one, there was one that just kind of flew off out of nowhere. I wasn't really expecting. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from. Uh, I wasn't paying much attention. I was at work, uh, actually working that day. So weird. What? John, what is it? Uh, yes, it is a Disney Parks Droid Factory 4-pack from the Ahsoka series. Uh, so it's going up for pre-order on January 29th on Shop Disney. Presumably should be available in the parks uh, around the same time. Uh, this is the first 4-pack from a series or movie that uh, the Droid Factory has done since the Obi-Wan Kenobi set from about a year and a half ago. So it's really? nice to see them return. Yeah, they have had sets about uh, the holidays and Pride since then. Yeah, yeah. But there have been no uh, show themed uh, sets since then, unless I'm, again, horribly, horribly wrong about that. They didn't do one for Mando season three. Uh, yeah, so, because God bless uh, Favreau and his secrets. Anyway. Can't spoil uh, those droids. Yes, we'll get way more into that later. <laughs> but uh, no, Hasbro does not make this line, though people are still confused in every comment section about that fact to this day. But uh, this set includes a couple of figures that Hasbro also has in Vintage Collection. Uh, it has Chopper, the Droid Factory version that Disney Parks first released in 2017. Uh, it has not been available in quote-unquote normal Chopper, if Chopper can ever be described as normal. <laughs> it hasn't been available in his normal colors since then, uh, outside of a color-changing version that's pretty close to normal Chopper, Chopper colors. But it's had a lot of wacky repaints since then for holidays and various Disney-related events. There's a Mickey Mouse one and a Frankenstein one on my desk at, as we speak. Those are uh, the only two versions I have of that sculpt uh, open. Uh, okay. I only have the carded chopper that you got me. But other than that, I've I've been really wanting this figure uh, loose. I, I kind of gave up on it coming, so I was really glad we got the TVC one, which is yeah. chef's kiss, an incredible figure. But I'm excited to be For able sure. to complement that with this. Yeah, I do. I really love the Vintage Collection chopper, but I also think this is a great figure in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, it is more animated styling, but it has... Um, you know, it's a little bit larger than the Hasbro figure, and it has articulated head arms, which I know everyone was so up in uh, head arms about a few months ago. <laughs> uh, but uh, compared to the original one, this one has more weathering and coloring, a little more in line with the live action uh, version of Chopper. So that's something. Nice to get him out there again. Yeah. Next up is my boy, Hu Yang, of course. Thank the the force. But uh, <laughs> And of course, uh, happy that a vintage collection version is right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, but... So he said, okay, well, what's the difference in this one? Why do, why, does, why do we need this one? This one should have removable limbs like all other Droid Factory figures, which means you can recreate the Clone Wars scenes where he loses his head and arms. So the Hu Yang gang has options and the Hu Yang gang stays winning, folks. I'm so happy for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. But uh, thankfully, it also comes with two figures that Hasbro has not made, uh, one of which is RD3 a droid that's on the New Republic cruiser Vesper in the first episode when Balin and Shin attack to break out Morgan Elsbeth. Still don't have a Balin or Shin or any sign of them, but thank God we have RD3. 
Uh, this is an astromech with yellow, black, and silver details. It's an R-series astromech droid with the same style dome as N0AH from the Mandalorian, Noah, and SK620 from the Galactic Star Cruiser, but without that additional antenna. So uh, we don't know what that exact kind of R-series droid is called, as far as I know. Um, it's an R11. I have no idea. But uh, the sculpt will probably be shared with those droid factory figures. I have no reason to believe otherwise. Um, and the last one is a Maroon R4 unit, uh, whose name we do not know, but we'll probably learn when the set goes up. Um, it's the droid that pilots Ahsoka, Hera, and everyone's favorite, Min Weaver, on a little speed. Top of everybody's the... <laughs> top 25 lists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to sweep it all this year. <laughs> but uh, this droid drives them on a little speeder through the Karelian shipyards in the second episode, and it has a maroon and gray color scheme uh, like the other droids in those shipyards. Sweet. So, yeah, cool to see it coming. Um, there are a lot of great designs in the Ahsoka series of droids. Um, so it's a little bit of a bummer that they're doing two droids that Hasbro is doing. But, again, this goes back to when they did Ned B and One Jack in the Obi-Wan set and Hasbro did not. People complained. So, you know, if this had come out before we had known about Chopper or Hu Yang, it might be a different story. Um, but I would, you know, love to see more Astromex, any protocol droids from the series, uh, as well as Mando Season 3. So it's nice to see these packs return. And there you go. It's a nice little hit of newness to hold us over. So I, I like that. Yeah. I'm excited for that. It's a nice way to expand the world of the uh, some of these various series. And it's nice that they have a set for, you know, the various shows and movies as they come out. So, yeah, so I love building see. the world that I don't have the main character <laughs> to put in. Uh, anyway, speaking of that, Hasbro held a fan stream on January 23rd, which again, day of recording was yesterday, uh, and put up some items for pre-order on January 24th, uh, including six mainline figures, all of which were previously pipelined. No surprises here, folks. The first two were pipelined almost five months ago on August 29th, and the four after that were pipelined over six months ago on July 21st. Uh, John, take us through them. All right, so first up is Clone Commander Rex on his Baraka mission from the Bad Batch. Uh, and the Bad Batch Season 3 trailer came out the day before the reveals, and we still don't have a second member of the main crew. But here's a second Bad Batch version of a Clone Wars character who's barely in the show. That's just as good, <laughs> right? Uh, he does look awesome. Uh, you know, probably the, the best Rex we've ever gotten. It's the first Rex based on the the recent VC-269 Clone Trooper from last year. Um, yes, he does have an animated style belt, different than the realistic belt seen in the Ahsoka series. So no, unfortunately, he can't just be put on an Ahsoka card as is, but an Ahsoka version with some of those changed details would be awesome as well. He does not have the inaccurate concept art binoculars or the giant boy band hair bouffant from the <laughs> previous uh, VC-208 Bad Batch Rex figure from that four pack. Um, I know people were you know, maybe worried they were just going to repack that one. Thankfully, they did not do that. He does have accurate short hair and a little scar where his Order 66 chip was removed. Someone mentioned, uh, and looking at the pictures, it looks, does he have the old, the, the hands from the old figure? What? Someone, Someone mentioned, mentioned that. that. I don't know why that would be the case. I haven't actually okay. uh, checked. I was looking that, at but. the photos and it kind of looked like a giant wrist joint similar to the older figure. I That would be weird. Maybe it's. That they'd put that on there. Maybe it was a mo part of the mock-up. I don't know. Yeah, some of these things are inaccurate as you'll as you'll see as we get along, but it'll be interesting to see maybe those hands fit his little pistols better. <laughs> those things are little. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what's uh not incorrectly sized is the helmet. That's I'm not I'm not as good as the segues as you are. <laughs> but uh Emily mentioned an interchangeable helmet, so you know, hopefully the head and the helmet will be uh, accurately sized this time. Cool. Um and I, I will say if I if I can throw out a complaint, uh, the first of many throughout the show. Uh, the weld marks on his helmet and torso should have some more copper and light blue color, but these are more gray and he shouldn't really have them on his cheeks, but you know, whatever. Um, so it's maybe not perfect, but is absolutely the best Rex they have ever done uh, in the vintage collection. So third time is the charm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, also moving right along to another character with a big old helmet that you can take off. <laughs> yes. Another third time is the charm character. It's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> X-Wing pilot, or as we all love to recall him, P.O.L.A., uh, is a repack of the 2019 figure that was first released in the Jedi Destiny 3-pack at Comic-Con, then is VC-158 later that year for the Rise of Skywalker Triple Force Friday wave. Uh, the previous VC-158 carded figure is going for around like $35 online, so it's not hugely difficult to get, but it's, you know, it's nice to keep characters like Luke in the line, obviously, the main character, so... That figure, was that one two per case? 
in the triple oh. force because i know that wave in particular you know like ray yeah i think was maybe short packed um that those figures still kind of hover in the higher end of tvc 2.0 yeah. stuff on the secondary market because it seems to have gotten a much smaller run yeah uh, it was so. pretty uh i don't know what the case assortment was but it was it was difficult to find that wave in stores yeah. very it kind of came and went pretty quickly yeah but uh, the big update here is they finally moved the warning label off of the Hildebrandt artwork, which a lot of people have been asking them to do, uh, only to cover the racetrack at the bottom, which I had asked them not to do, but that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I still wanted to, whatever, you know, not the most thrilling thing to talk it's about. Like but there's prime anyway. real estate just on the other side of the, the punch. They could literally, or just, or on the same side of the punch, but just to the left a little bit. But, you know, it does look nice and clean up there now. That's great. But I wish the racetrack was un interrupted here's how we solve this kids stop eating accessories <laughs> seriously yeah i don't know i don't know what they can do about it but whatever this is what they're doing now so now you get to buy the same a new hope cards all over again yeah um and we know there are other figures from a new hope coming but they didn't mention any of those today but they are still coming so yes yeah they didn't just you're... yoink that leia out of the uh yeah out of the schedule so and we're all we're all looking forward to that looking for leia hashtag looking for leia but she is still <laughs> coming so i'm uh i'm curious too also because i do like carded stuff as well yes i'm excited about the front of the card back with the uh you know you can see the hildebrandt art uh but I'm also excited, kind of, for some whatever dumb reason, to see the back of the card back uh, with yeah. the nice splash of color. So I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So happy beeps where we can get them. And it will looking, be a, looking yeah, on thicker, the bright side. The thicker card back that they've implemented over the last few years. Uh, true, so true. That's, but that also means hopefully they get rid of the white scuffing mark by then anyway. Um, we'll find out. Uh, another. <laughs> hold on. News from the future. Uh, no, they did not solve that. <laughs> <laughs> wow news from the future i gotta subscribe to that yeah but uh, uh some news from the future that i'm hoping for is that while they have this tooling fired up hopefully they can knock out some other rebel pilots from a new hope and rogue one and return of the jedi still waiting on that theron net red 10 but uh you know we've got a lot of great imperial uh four packs so we need more rebel pilot yeah but hasbro Again, channeling Tyler here. He's not here with us right now. Hasbro, for the love of God, do not uh, do not put Carson Tiva on this body at all. <laughs> Please. Love him. He is not uh, yeah. showing the physique with a 19-year-old Mark Hamill. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so thank you in advance for not doing that. Things that we cannot thank them for. Next one. <laughs> Axe Woes. Privateer. Air quotes. Uh, a new rabbit hole to go down. Who boy. Uh, mm -hmm, so... Mm -hmm. Let me take a breath here before I read this diatribe. Uh, this is the exact same figure that was a Target exclusive two years ago. I'm looking at him on my desk right now. VC-228. But now it has a swappable helmet instead of a removable one. That is an upgrade. You may recall the size of his removable helmet was a huge point of contention in the collector community. Everyone made a big stink about it. And now Hasbro is correcting it. They are doing something you asked them to do. Uh, as they have done with a few things, like changing Captain Ballast's name pill to Captain Hauser, they're directly fixing an issue that fans had been very vocal about, but it can take a couple of years to act on that sort of thing because of production schedules. So it is a nice thought, if a little late. In that regard, I have to give them kudos for paying attention and actually doing something to fix a previous release people were not happy with. So kudos. I give them to you, Hasbro. However, <laughs> in season two... Uh, Axe Wolves wore the same armor as the live-action Death Watch Mandalorians from Season 1, that flashback, which is similar to Din Djarin's armor from the first few episodes before his Beskar upgrade. Uh, the TVC Axe Wolves figure is a repaint of the VC-219 Death Watch Mandalorian figure, but with the unmasked head and the giant helmet. In Season 2, Axe had an extra little flap going under his belt, starting at his uh, torso armor, that the figure does not have, so it's not 100% accurate anyway. But in Season 3... They changed Axe's chest armor to the more traditional shape seen on Boba Fett, Jango Fett, animated Mandalorians like Pre Vizsla, and so on. Uh, this armor has, of course, been done a number of times in TVC. But Axe being Axe, that fashionista, he did not change anything else about his chest. So he still has the padded collar area and a thin piece of armor on each side, uh, as opposed to the more traditional wide piece of armor that stretches all across the collar that, uh, that those other Mando figures have. Uh, he still has a strip at his belt. All that to say, no, unfortunately, they could not just reuse an existing chest if we want a, an accurate Season 3 axe. So, 
uh, well, the, where the problem lies is that Hasbro opted to use a season three image on the card back and to call him a privateer, which he is in season three. Um, so to recap, hopefully you were skipping through all of that uh, using your little <laughs> the 30 seconds forward button. Uh, they fixed an issue with the season two design, but put him on a season three card back. And I think people would have preferred the season three figure overall. Um, the, sorry yeah. to, st- uh, yeah, to kind of yeah, step yeah. on you here. The chest armor is also not the only point of inaccuracy here. Um, whereas I think they maintain the same face print. So he still has stubble. Whereas uh, I don't think he had that in season three. That's not a huge deal for me. Uh, but there was also the uh, the belt on his holster. I think there's like an extra yep. strap that they're missing. And he has a blue piece of armor on his right shin that... Yep is also missing so yes 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 so uh another thing that's strange is the loose images of this release show his giant removable helmet from the previous release the carded image i think shows a properly sized swappable helmet which presumably is just the same as the one from the death watch mandalorian figure anyway that's what we all expected because that's what they showed in the loose images of the previous release so they keep swapping the helmets they're just not making it easy for us no, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. So anyway, there's the, there's a little axe statement, but, and it is unfortunate. Again, it is an example of Hasbro fixing one issue and unfortunately causing another. There goes Paz off my desk. Uh, <laughs> to some people, it's apparently enough to end their collections altogether after four decades. I, you got to ask them. I don't know. It's, it's annoying. It's not the end of the world. Axe woves, more like axe woes. <laughs> and there's the episode title. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're not done with Mandos. Do you want to take any of these at all? Sure. Uh, I'll go on this next one. Uh, the figure that everybody loves, everybody's clamoring for. We all know his name. Oh, wait a sec. No, we don't. It's the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. Uh, does he have that a name, is, John? That is his name. Oh. It's well, that was fortuitous. The... His parents really set him up for success. <laughs> <laughs> like Hunter and, you know, but... Um, true enough, true enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is the guy who works with Axe Woves in season three and helps retake Mandalore and uh, c- commands the fleet, apparently. Uh, surprisingly, there are a lot of new parts. There's a lot of new tooling than it might look like at first. Uh, if I may editorialize, yes. new tooling that would have been great for Axe. Anyway, uh, the... <laughs> Upper arms and upper thighs are reused from the Clone Wars Mandalorians, and the forearms and hands are probably maybe reused, but the head, chest, and most of the legs appear to be new. Uh, Even the jetpack details are different from the existing ones. John, more on that. What do you mean by that? Uh, The little rocket on the top is a little bit thinner um, and longer uh, from the rocket pack. I was was looking at Axe and his jetpack we have seen a number of times on these various Mandalorians. And uh, the details are just a little bit different. Some of the details on the forearms seem a little sharper. I'm not sure. There are so many different Mandalorians released over the last couple of years that I, I didn't pull them all out to check. But um, yeah, his, his legs are very clearly new other than like the, the very upper, upper thigh parts. You know, I don't know. Again, did they need to sculpt that much newness on this guy? Not necessarily. But again, we can't ding them for axe being yeah. wrong and then uh, ding them for making going the extra mile to make this guy accurate. So... And and when I said tooling for Axe for this yes, one, yes. I don't mean like the tooling for this character. No, no. The tooling budget would have yes, been nice yes. for, for Axe instead. However, how could they have known? Lucasfilm doesn't tell them things. Um, <laughs> the uh, helmet appears to be removable, uh, but it tends to work out okay on figures without a ton of hair. Uh, and then you wrote here, maybe his head is a little too small. Looking at the photos, his head does look a little undersized. And, um, and- yeah, and that was just my guess that it's removable. I don't actually know. It seems like maybe they're just going in favor of swappable entirely. Yeah. I don't know. In the pictures, it looks like it definitely could be um, removable, though. Well, I mean, but again, we, who we knows? just dragged them <laughs> for the, the yeah. big helmets. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a little skittish and decided to opt for the safe play. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, this guy did just come out in the Black Series a month or two ago. So it, it is a nice example of balance of scales. Even You know, we won't get him until July, apparently, probably a little bit before that. But. Not too terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. The next one is another Mandalorian, the Mandalorian, have you, uh, from uh, the the name here is Minds of Mandalore. So, sorry, not the name, but the, 
the title on him. So yes, they are going to continue to release the Mandalorian, Din Djarin. He is popular and he sells. And if you don't want to buy him, that's your right. Uh, John, some more details on this release. Yes, yes. This release is, from the looks of it, again, who knows, it appears to be the exact same figure that came with the N1 Starfighter uh, with that cloth cape and the rocker ankles that were added on various previous versions, uh, but without the bulky forearms from the rescue set. So, again, the knife is that he comes with is black in the N1 set, and it was new there. In the loose photos here, it looks sort of black. It looks sort of light gray in the carded photo. I hope that it matches the N1 version when it's released so I can sleep at night because I was this close to buying a second N1 so I can have a carded figure and an open figure of this den. What That's kind of what... idiot would do that? Yeah, I have no idea. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I held... So again, as always, every time you overspend to get a figure, they immediately release it for the rest of us. So thank you for doing that. I'm just uh, doing my part. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so again, not the most exciting if we, you know, if you're someone like us who has every single other 18,000 versions of Din Djarin, but it's the best version they have. Uh, still need barbell hips at some point, of course. Um, and it should uh, satiate us on Din Djarin's for at least the next 10 minutes. So that's nice. Yes. And uh, one of the photos in the uh, uh, product uh, glam shots is him flying with his jetpack, and this kind of reminds me. There's also a hilarious one of Axe also flying with his jetpack, and those are just so unenthusiastically posed. Um, and I was kind of thinking about it too, where you mentioned it'd be nice to have the barbell hips, but I'd also like to see them maybe on like these Mando's characters with jetpacks, maybe innovate something new for like the neck articulation so that they can actually look up when they're yeah, in for flight. Sure. That would be really cool because right now it's kind of tough. Like in that photo uh, of Din, of this figure, uh, of him in flight, it just kind of reminds me of uh, Michael Sarah in Arrested Development coming home <laughs> sad about something and just laying down. So Iconic. Yeah, iconic. Iconic. Everything's iconic. Speaking of iconic, Grogu, the child. The figure's so nice, they uh, accidentally started at London Comic Con and literally nobody noticed or cared. <laughs> um, so The figure's so nice that the photo, the product photo that they defaulted to on Hasbro Pulse is <laughs> just of the accessory. <laughs> the only new thing here, guys, this is what you're really buying it for. Let's not kid ourselves. Because oh, uh, Grogu is the exact same uh, sitting down version that was first released with the deluxe Walmart uh, Ahsoka set a couple years back. Again, with the handcuffs and the rescue set. Uh, and he has the unwrapped Beskar shirt from the recent Deluxe Luke uh, from Book of Boba Fett. So the main draw here, such as it is, is the Season 3 Pram with the darker color scheme, uh, which I do appreciate they're doing that. I'll use this. I'll use my time here to point out they did this both Season 1 Prams in Vintage Collection, but have not done Season 2 Pram at all. They've done it in Bounty collection and black series and things like that, but still needed in TVC. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. Put it in an accessory pack with uh, somebody else or something more interesting. What what pram is uh, with the Epic Heroes one? Uh, I don't know, actually. I think it might be this one also. Okay. Don't quote me on I, that. I but. could look. I'm not going to do that. I could look. I'll too. And I am also not going to. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, right. Man, we crush it with research <laughs> here. <laughs> it needs to be in TVC, long story short. Yes, yes, yes. Um. We'll have more to say overall about all this stuff, you know, not the most thrilling uh, reveals ever, but yeah, something that was actually quite good, probably my favorite actually uh, shown reveal of the day is the Sabine Wren and Chopper 2-pack, the aforementioned Hasbro Pulse exclusive. It is a timed release, like they uh, mentioned a few months ago. The pre-order window is open until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on February 14th, Valentine's Day. So after you've binged all the new episodes of Young Jedi Adventures that come out that day, as a little <laughs> Valentine's Day treat to yourself, make sure you've already ordered as many Sabine and Chopper sets as you can humanly uh, buy, because that's your last chance to get it. Get your significant other what they really want this Valentine's Day. <laughs> Sabine Wren and Chopper in Star Wars The Vintage Collection. Available on Hasbro Pulse. Yes, that's that says love to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, of, of course, these figures complete the Rebels mural card backs, uh, since the other four characters in the Spectre crew are part of the Ghost HasLab campaign. Uh, as for the figures themselves, Chopper, the repaint of the new TVC figure, which I love, uh, more to more closely match his animation colors. The most obvious uh, difference is his lighter feet, his blue eyes, um, the gray parts, like the exposed wiring on him and the arms. Uh, seem to be kind of glittery almost. 
Not sure why, but boy, is it pretty. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of stuff in Rebels that kind of looks like it has flecks of paint on it. They're going for like a Ralph McQuarrie art style. So I don't know if it's that. Um, I don't know, but it looks it looks interesting. Um, he includes the swappable antenna and removable wheel from the basic release. Sadly, he does not have the rocket booster from Rebels, but it's not shown in the mural. And uh, they are kind of defaulting to the mural here, which means he comes with two more Lothcats based on the Merle sculpt that came with the Deluxe Sabine and the white Lothcat that comes with Ezra. And thank God there are four Lothcats in the Rebels mural and there are four Lothcats in TVC. Uh, so yeah, complete that crew. The real star of this set, perhaps the real star of the reveals, uh, was Sabine Wren. The first ever Sabine figure based on her season three armor and hairstyle, uh, which happens to be my favorite look for her. Uh, and matches the mural. Um, Emily said it's almost fully new, and as I was feverishly comparing existing figures to the uh, <laughs> images last night of all of these, and my eyes were glazing over, um, I don't see any shared tooling aside from maybe like the hands and maybe the lower legs if the bandoliers are like glued on separately. So maybe like the hands and feet might be it. Uh, it's very new. It's like mostly new. That's surprising. It is, but it is not surprising to me because I did that exhaustive uh, deep dive in all the Rebels costumes. <laughs> I'm not surprised that it's different. Yes, I'm surprised yes, yes. it's just the amount of newness that they spent the money on. However, obviously, that comes with the higher price point uh, when they uttered the dreaded word deluxe when talking about the paint apps and whatever for this two pack. So, yes. So, it, you know. They spent the money on the deco, and the deco looks incredible. Um, it does. It does. All the different designs and, you know, Rebel Insignia she has on there, um, and the, the paint spray and things like that. So they spared no expense, uh, and I love the, the white and purple hairstyle they recreated. I was going to say it might also be the new head sculpt. It looks slightly different um, with different glued on hair. So anyway, um, she includes, in, all, in addition to all that wonderful, uh, expensive deco, she includes two blasters, her jetpack, I would say for the first time, but I know for a fact the Epic Hero series figure has a giant, enormous one. Yeah. Um, jetpack, jetpack flame and a swappable helmet, another thing we were also up in arms about, and it actually looks fantastic. So again, referring to those Rebels uh, costume things, which I hope everyone has committed to memory by this point, and if not, you will be dinged points on the test, uh, to create... <laughs> To create season one and two rebel looks from here for her, they would only need to sculpt up her other hairstyle. They can reuse the other, the rest of the tooling entirely from her. Um, and to create season four version, they would need to sculpt uh, her different gauntlets that she wears, which are actually pretty similar to the ones from the Ahsoka series figure. And they'd reuse her season three hairstyle. Um, so yeah, that was a nice surprise to see how much effort they put into it. I, again, knowing that she should have been quite different and it was nice to see that they actually did put in the effort to make her that different. It, that's it's my favorite reveal of the day other than a pipeline. Maybe we'll get into, but she just looks amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled with these one. I mean, that's the, I think that's the fastest TVC has completed a crew in recent memory. <laughs> uh, we, we backed, uh, we got the ghost last summer fall and now we have these two coming. They'll all be showing up around the same time later this year. Uh, yeah. that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about that. They look fantastic. And like, you know, being surprised by the new tooling, uh, that went into this version. Uh, I am a little more excited to see what they're cooking up for the pipelined, uh, previously pipelined versions of earlier seasons, Kanan and Zeb. So yep. I'm hoping that maybe they'll surprise us there with a little more, more new tooling than we may think. So we're going to have that a great smaller collar on Ezra to look forward to. I think that's about <laughs> it for that guy, but you know, it's, I'll take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So eventually they'll get to season the season one and two. Look, no, Jing, they did. You guys did not pipeline that one yeah. yet. <laughs> so if it's coming, that would be great. And you, you yeah. surprised us by leaking that in the Q and A, but I don't, I don't think you did. So no, 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 no. One day. So yeah, that looks great. So uh, we've touched on previous pipelines. Uh, we just got a whole new chunk of them. We just cleared seven from the pipeline. We had seventeen before the stream. Cleared seven. Now we have some new ones in there. Uh, let's go ahead and get the one out of the way that people might not be super thrilled about. Uh, at least f purists Again, of the vintage collection might not be that, thrilled about. Hit that fast so. forward button a couple times. We'll be, we'll be here talking about TVC when you get back. 
Yes, yes. We're not going anywhere. Uh, the first one is a uh, retro collection six pack from Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, which is Hasbro Pulse and Shop Disney exclusive, like most of the other retro sets other than the Target exclusive Phantom Menace one. Uh, this is following up on the Phantom Menace one and continuing part of that prequel beat uh, this year to celebrate the 25th yeah. anniversary of the of the Phantom Menace slash the prequels. Um but yeah, uh, the figures in this set are Anakin Skywalker, the Jedi Knight from Revenge of the Sith, Padme Amidala in her Geonosis attire from Attack of the Clones, uh, Mace Windu, Jango Fett, General Grievous, and a Phase 2 clone trooper. Sadly, no Obi-Wan. Yep, the one I wanted the most is the one that they're not going to do. So <laughs> what else is new? Uh, yeah. yeah. And the, yeah, no phase one clone either. When they moved to uh, 5 POA back in 2013 for the basic line, um, the first couple waves were all prequel themed because that was around the time of the episode two and three uh, 3D releases that were canceled. But so we have a lot of these in that basic style, which, you know, a lot less refined than the later 5 POA figures. So that's what it's I keep that- thinking of, like with Anakin and Mace and Jingo and the clone especially, but. Yeah, those those 2013 kind of 5 POA ones, though, it's kind of that weird in between where it's not the Kenner aesthetic and it's yeah. not quite up to snuff with modern sculpting. Yeah. So it's kind of awkward. Uh, like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, being a retro collector, I'm excited about the set. I'm a little confused about them mixing the two films in it. One, how are they going to brand the box? Uh, and I was kind of hoping they were just going to do a set for each movie so we could just kind of get those out of the way. Eh. But yeah. whatever, I, yeah. So I'm yes, it's too... three from each, three from each movie, and then you can't really, you know, Anakin can't meet Grievous. I guess he can at the very beginning of the film. Yeah. You can't meet him throughout the Clone Wars, of course. But uh, isn't it four and two the film out that they have for Mace's Revenge of the Sith, right? Uh, yeah. So you know, I guess uh, he didn't really change his costume a whole lot between the movies, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what film out they put him on. I would assume Attack of the Clones, since they already have that card bucked up from a decade ago. And will Django True. be on his old card? I don't know. Sometimes they mix it up. Yeah. I was going to say, you can't really go by the images they use for the pipeline. For example, the R2-D2 that they've called out is from A New Hope. The image that they use for the pipeline is from Revenge of the Sith. So I would I would just hope Mace and Django can be on Attack of the Clones cards together because there's no like cohesive theming otherwise. Yeah. None of the other figures really go together at all. So, uh, yeah. Instead of a removable helmet for Django Fett, I would really love a hark back to the 2002 action features of a removable head for Django Fett. Yes. (laughs) Magnet and all. Yes. Uh, Anyway, moving on from that dirty, dirty, filthy stuff that we shall not be talking about. uh, There is another multi-pack in the pipeline. And John, this is similar to kind of in the wheelhouse of the earlier thing you talked about. What is it? Another droid related four pack. Ooh. And I may or may not have literally jumped up and pumped the air at this one. And I did. The may is the correct answer. Yeah. Um, it is <laughs> a, a four pack of a scene from the Siege of Mandalore arc right before Order 66, during and after Order 66. It's Ahsoka Tano, R7A7, CH33P, a.k.a. Cheap, and RGG1, a.k.a. GG. Um, amazing. I really never thought they were going to get Cheap and GG into the line. Shocking. Um yeah, so Ahsoka will probably undoubtedly, most assuredly be a repack. Would be cool if they did a live action head sculpt to match the Ahsoka flashback. They're probably not going to, but... No, I was going to say, d- I dare I be a fool and hope yeah. for a new head sculpt, <laughs> or maybe they can include the, a new soft goods for the robe with her hood, or maybe an unlit yeah. lightsaber. Uh, but I know they won't, but... Yeah, the hilts would be nice. Would be, nice. be nice. They could even put her on a Tales of the Jedi card just from that second in, they could. that they show that. I need something from that show, guys. <laughs> in terms of the cards, I'll just I'll just speak to that real quick because we don't know how they're going to do this. It's an Amazon exclusive, similar to their other uh, true three and four packs that they've done before, so they'll probably be carded. Um, since that Ahsoka was released a couple of years ago, they have now moved to using entirely animated film outs for Clone Wars and Bad Batch and Rebels figures, um, as opposed to the sort of like half realistic style they did at the time. So I assume she will at least get a new card. Um, will she get a new number? I don't know. We'll we'll find out. Again, yeah, the cloak would go a long way to making her um, an, an interesting purchase. Yeah. Though I know a lot of people did get that Ray cloak for her a while ago. Um, anyway, they have also done R7A7, her trusty droid, a number of times. Uh, so has Disney Parks. Um, but uh, yeah, I really never thought they'd get to cheap and Gigi. 
Um, so cheap will undoubtedly, well, undoubtedly, I have doubts, probably, let's say probably, uh, <laughs> be based on the new chopper since he is a, uh, a C-series astromech. Hopefully with a new torso front since he looks newer, dare I say nicer than Chop. Don't say, don't tell Chopper that I said <laughs> that because um, he's not missing as many panels on the front. He will also need a new leg and a new rounder head, which will open up to more repaints and whatnot going forward. Um, and This Is No Cave on Instagram pointed out to me that GG will be the first R4 unit in TVC, which I was not aware of. And he was very uh, happy that he got to tell me a fact I did not know. So keep him coming. Um, they've obviously done R4 units uh, plenty of times before TVC, and, and like in Legacy Collection. So it will probably use the Build-A-Droid Legacy Collection sculpt that already exists. I would not assume that they would do anything different. Um, unless somehow that pipeline R2-D2 is magically new, which it will, will not be. So uh, squash those hopes now. <laughs> but uh yeah i really like the uh he's like black and gold kind of cool stripes on gg um yeah they did they've done an incredible job at filling out the siege of mandalore arc overall but uh yeah we already have you know from this this scene the final showdown on the uh on the um star destroyer Imper uh, republic cruiser what do they call at the time i don't know star destroyer you can yell at me about this the, later is what the venator class the venator, yeah. yeah before it all crashes but they uh you know, they did Jesse and they're doing that, that four pack, that uh, controversial four pack of clones, which you can use for that scene. But, and we got this Rex with his chip removed. So now it's, it's kind of amazing that they're doing cheap and GG again, maybe, uh, maybe not the, not the most uh, high priority things before any other characters in the bad batch. If we're going with clone Wars season seven characters, but uh, you know, I'll take it. I'm happy. And you know who else was in the siege of Mandalore arc? Obi-Wan and Anakin in their revenge That's of the Sith looking That's outfits. That's true. That's true. Ah, I'm going mad <laughs> wanting those two guys. <laughs> I want those clone, the clone jet troopers too from their first scene where they uh, yeah. fight on that bridge. Anyway, we we could go on, but yes, luckily yes. the Siege of Mandalore uh, wish lists are growing ever, ever smaller. How yes, about another yes. droid? Want to tell us about another droid repaint here? I would love to tell you about another droid repaint here. It is the HK-87 Assassin droid remix. Uh, it is a <laughs> repaint of VC-294 in the red and tan color scheme. This version is already in the retro collection, and this color scheme is in uh, the black series from its Mandalorian Season 2 appearance, although that appearance has different soft goods and a bandolier. Um, Ahsoka fights several of these droids in the series, and there's only one of the mostly red version that has already released, so it's nice that the army builder one is on the way uh there's also a red and black one that would be great to get as well um yeah i was kind of figuring they would probably do the hk droids in a four pack that was what made the most yeah. sense to me i'm curious i mean it's not that there isn't precedent for retro collection and tvc having different cards um I'm curious if they'll just do the photoshopped recolor of the yeah. same card. Uh, that would <laughs> actually not. be a silly variant if they kept the same VC number even. That's one that they can double up on the VC number yeah. and I wouldn't be sad about. So, <laughs> Hopefully now that the show is out, uh, they'll have a better film out of you know a shot from the actual show to use yeah. as opposed to that weird Photoshop thing. But um, yeah, it's, it's a repaint. I know there's a lot of repaints today. We'll obviously get into that in a minute. But um, it is a repaint we all wanted and we're all asking for so. There yeah. is also a, uh, yeah, the red and black one that she fights on Corellia. Uh, that would be great to get as well. Yeah. You know what would also be great? Merrick, but whatever. That would be awesome. would be awesome. Yeah. We're not here to talk about <laughs> what we want. We're not here to talk about newly tooled figures. That's yeah. nuts. We don't get those anymore. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of not getting newly tooled figures, we've got the Dark Trooper coming again as well. I'm glad they had to pipeline a figure we already have. <laughs> uh, single carded repack of the deluxe figure without the charging station. So again, John, you wrote here, uh, mm -hmm. as they've already done a few times with these reveals. They're addressing an issue that people had when the figure was first shown almost two years ago, which was, why doesn't this come on a card? Of course, since then, we've all bought too many of the Deluxe One uh, on clearance. In fact, the Deluxe One is on Hasbro Pulse's outlet section right now for $15.74, which is a buck twenty-five less than the single-carded repack will be. But I digress. I still think it'll be cool to have on a card at least. Yes, and I didn't ask for it. Somebody did. Somebody listening probably asked for it. So I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. <laughs> it'll look like it'll be a great card. It'll be a cool card. Um, yeah. You know, we've all spent way too much money getting 40 of these to match the show, but uh, I'll yeah. buy another one to put on my yeah. wall. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, John, what's the next one? It's Ahsoka. Another Ahsoka. The second Ahsoka in the 
pipeline and now it's her white outfit from the end of her series aka ahsoka the white which they probably cannot say for legal purposes with the tolkien state um <laughs> another one we have been asking for it's probably based on her existing figure hopefully with presumably if they want to do it right she will have new forearms and shins uh and a new head with longer leku to match the show and a new headband that she changes we all remember the horrifying scene where we saw her without her headband and we never want to see it again <laughs> Uh, as with the other Ahsoka, again, dare we dream of a cloak? Maybe that would be awesome. Yeah. And she would go with, if we want to build more rebel scenes with the rebels mural, you know, she's from the, uh, was first seen in that outfit at the end of rebels, even though they kind of retcon that in the Ahsoka show. Yeah. Give her the staff or something. I don't know. Yeah. I know they won't, but, uh, repack it again later next year and give her the staff and put her on a rebels card. Yes. But I am. So between that and the HK, uh, repaint, it was nice to see some fairly low hanging fruit from Ahsoka, from the Ahsoka show. Obviously there are characters Balin, Shin, and Merrick that we all want to see but um those with some of the droids from that set it's nice to again build out the world maybe not the the top most requested ones but i know i wanted the ahsoka the white figure it's it's an awesome outfit that she wears for uh the second half of her series so it's pretty important to get that right. in there so again make the mains that's always great also make the main villains as well so she has yes. someone to fight but it will be awesome to have her and you know we have that great deluxe sabine that we got last year so that'll be cool to be able to have master and apprentice and their current as of now at the end of the series yes. what they look like uh in their most recent uh appearance so and they will of course be hanging out with either uh, of the two huyang figures that are coming to this scale yes this year. yes oh boy i'm eating good today folks <laughs> Uh, uh yeah they've really stolen your heart speaking of stolen <laughs> next one yes the mandalorian with a stolen imperial jetpack from the very <laughs> end of season three and man i'm so excited it had been literally almost 10 minutes since they announced a mando figure so this is well worth the wait um again this is something that i wanted and it's something that i put on a wish list wednesday post and when, yeah when i pointed that out to you guys so it's Tyler your was, fault yeah yeah I, I take responsibility. <laughs> Tyler was like, you need to uh, only ever put new figures on your wish list post from now on. And I, I accept that responsibility. With great power yeah. comes great responsibility, <laughs> I believe. But uh, just while we're on the subject, he's got a new jetpack. The existing Mando figure has sort of a weird off-center hole for the jetpack to accommodate his original uh, plastic cape. Uh, all other, you know, Mando and clone trooper figures lately have had that whole move to the center of their back so they can kind of mix and match. Um, I wonder if they'll tool up a new back for him to accommodate this so that they can also just use that uh, jetpack for an Imperial Super Commando that I hope is coming. Um, it will be, again, insane if they just give us the jetpack and not the rest of the figure. But it I would, would not be put it on past brand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we got Lola and no Leia. That's so. true. That's true. Oh, Lord. Yeah. But, uh, not the most exciting release, but again, you know, they're going to keep doing Mandos. This is a new, it, as close as we're going to get to a new look for him at this point. He does have a new belt where he has, you know, both holsters in there. Or not a new belt, but he will need a new, newly tooled belt, to, newly tooled belt to get both blasters in there that he steals from these guys as well. Um, It'd be a great opportunity for them to do the hip upgrade. Yep, uh, yep. Barbell hips. Sorry, I stumbled over the word upgrade. Not barbell used to saying hips, things. Maybe next time. That's the, yeah. that's, that's our motto here. Yeah, if but, they don't uh, do it on this upcoming pipeline one, I'm sure there'll be plenty yeah. of more. There'll be another one when they reveal this one. They'll pipeline another one. Yeah, so can't wait. it's nice that they are again low hanging fruit, not the most exciting. It's what we already have, but it is nice they're revealing something from the end of Mando season three, uh, which also brings us to Bo-Katan uh, Kreese with a new signet pauldron, her new uh, 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 not mud horn, her mythosaur uh, symbol on her. Pauldron, again, we saw that. We say, oh boy, we know they're going to give us a new shoulder for bo and I'll gladly take it. Yes. And hopefully with her new hairstyle as well. Yes. The wig work was much better in season three. So congrats mm -hmm. to the wig team. Um, again, another partial tool, presumably. Uh, the existing figure has its issues. It's too short and all that. And uh, I think they overproduced it wildly when they made it. But it is one we were asking for. Maybe they'll put these guys in a two-pack. I wouldn't hate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but they need to have characters like this in the main line, in my opinion. So maybe they won't. She will probably come with Darksaber, I have to imagine, right? I hope. I would also hope that she has a gauntlet uh, shield like the, yeah. uh, like the Sabine has that I forgot to mention. True. Yeah, that'd um, be cool. But uh, it is, yeah, it would be a, a fun, easy thing for them to put in there. Yeah. Just drill a little hole in her arm and call it a day. Yeah. 
So final pipeline reveal of the day. Only uh, all new item in the pipeline. Uh, only all new item of the entire day. <laughs> Say it. Tell us. What line of work are you in, Cobb? <laughs> Cobb Vanth. Yes. Uh, Vanth Refrigeration. Uh, <laughs> deluxe figure. Apparently all new. It's got Boba's armor, so it's the armored version. And that means that he is disqualified from the March Madness bracket. Hallelujah. John, where was he? Yes. In previous years. He was on the brackets is where he was all three years. <laughs> he was ranked number 15 in 2021. He was ranked number 14 in 2022. Keeps getting ever higher. He was ranked number six in 2023 and made it to the Elite Eight that year. He was also number 10 in last figure standing in 2023 and made it into the final four there. So there has been demand ongoing for him for a long time. I've said before when I rewatched season two, he was the most glaringly missing figure out of the entire season. They did an incredible job. You know, we need the background weirdos, all that. But of the main characters, you know, that with prominent speaking roles, prominent parts in the story that season, he was by far the most prominent missing one. Other than Frog Lady, still got to get Frog Lady yeah. in there. Um, yeah, yeah. That, again, like you said, glaringly obvious. I mean, this is a figure that Hasbro should have been tripping over themselves trying to make because it was just like, oh, my God, Boba Fett's armor. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, it, it, come on, man. Like. This should have been a figure that they had pipelined end of at, at latest end of 2021 and should have came, but whatever. Because he, yeah, that episode was near the end of 2020. Yeah, it was the first episode of season two. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, so they've had time and they got him in the Black Series where he was also a deluxe figure there. Yes, yes. Um, and they specifically called out when they announced that one that it was the deco that made him deluxe, yes. similar to a Sabine situation. So he didn't have a ton of accessories. He had a helmet, he had uh, the jetpack, and he had two blasters, and that was it. The jetpack already exists because it's Boba's, and they can use the one with the removable um, missile. Although it has it damage, need missile. though. That's what I'm saying. But uh, yeah. the other... They'd have I to... believe The Boba ones have the damage, too, because they bo all the Boba jetpacks, uh, if they did them accurately, I can yeah. check in just a second, they have that little strip of damage where it okay. is, because Cobb just kind of like covered up the damage from the... Uh, from Hans stick on the skiff. Yes. Hans skiff stick. So anyway, uh, but again, so never mind. They won't reuse it because it's uh, supposedly brand new. So whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but our pal Van Sarmer on Instagram, he can finally rest easy. Dreams really do come true. Shout out uh, to you, man. <laughs> but you can stop counting the days from Cobb's first appearance to this announcement and start counting the days until the reveal, then the days until the release, then the days until the version without armor. But for now, you know, celebrate Rejoice. the wins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, that is an exciting one for sure. Um, I, I'm happy that we, you know, I, I've joked about it a lot of people, you know, we joked about it earlier in the show too, where that this, this stream was going to totally change. It's just going to change the shape of March madness. Like it's good. Yeah. People were acting like they were going to reveal everything. Some, some folks were not everybody. And I know some folks were uh, holding off on submitting their list to kind of see what was going to happen. Uh, this was really the only one that probably made any meaningful impact on our data. Uh, I know Cobb was on my list this year, so I do have to edit my list again. So, Yeah. Um, and I was going to say, I was trying to look at, back at last year's reveals, but last year the first stream also was pretty light on new reveals, but I know everybody, it's good to keep hope alive as always, but you mm -hmm. know, temper it so you're not crushingly disappointed when they reveal a bunch of uh, partial tools and save the good stuff, hopefully for another day. Yeah, yeah. But so, um yeah, we're in the overall thoughts now on this. We're in the stream. overall Sorry, thoughts. I, yes, yes. And it is a whole lot of reuse. Um so we I have no idea. Is this because Hollywood was on strike for half of last year? Lucasfilm delayed their new shows, so Hasbro had to add repaints and repacks and retools to get something out there. They have done that in the past when they needed new figures. Uh, I do not know. Is this because Project Blueprint 2.0 and Hasbro needs to cut back on new tooling to make more money, as much money as humanly possible? Is it because they genuinely wanted to get these figures out there? I Could be all of the above, could be none of the above. I do not know. Um, I personally don't mind reuse where it makes sense. We've gone over this before, but the figures revealed this week from Mando Season 3 and Ahsoka and Clone Wars and Rebels were all things I'd been wanting, uh, some for a few months, some for several years. And if parts that exist can be leveraged into creating unique characters or unique versions of characters that reuse existing parts, I have no problem with that. Um, some characters like Mando and Luke are always going to be in the line. They should always be in the line. Mm -hmm. um, we need to attract 
new collectors at all times if we want to go down the rabbit hole and get those background weirdos that we all want. Um, it makes sense for them to repack Pilot Luke, even if I already have him in both the uh, you know three pack and the single carded version. And so I appreciate that they're at least doing something different, like moving the warning label to make it somewhat maybe hopefully enticing to people who already bought it. Um, and we, we you know we need those main characters from all across the saga to bring in more fans. Um, but I also understand they should not be the focus of fan streams like this. It's, you know, it, it, it's things I agree with you. I completely agree with you on this, but I, I can't help but shake my head and laugh when I look at like, you know, the glam photo of the carded, uh, the carded Luke from this reveal. And it's like, cool, you made a big deal of showing us a figure that we bought five years ago. <laughs> and on the image, it says uh, digital mock-up or whatever, not actual. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Guys, I, can, I the, can just go grab one off my shelf and show it to you if you need. I'm looking at the carded figure right now. He's on my yeah, wall. But it's not a mystery. Like, don't <laughs> treat it like it's a huge deal. Like, so I think that's kind of where the disconnect is yeah. with that sort of stuff. Where yes, like you said, it shouldn't and really be the focus of these fan streams when it is more geared towards the more casual, the folks that might just walk by the toy aisle and be like, "Oh, there's a Luke Skywalker." Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's always a great place to start your collection. No one's going to start with, you know. I won't even name. I won't. I don't want to name and shame any of these secondary characters. But as much as I love them, people are going to want to start with a Luke or a Mando or whatever. Yeah. Um, so to another point, uh, I do appreciate the attempt to fix mistakes that collectors were very vocal about in the past. Us Rex, included. <laughs> yes, us included on this show. Yeah. Rex, Axe, Sabine, the single carded Dark Trooper, all address those things people have been asking about. Even if it took too long, even if we have moved on since asking for them, and even if the results are not perfect. Uh, Cobb is a figure that people have been wanting. People have been very vocal about wanting for over three years now. So this kind of thing shows that they're listening. You know, again, not perfect, but I appreciate that they're listening. So maybe we should choose our words more carefully. I don't know. Maybe is that on me? I don't know. <laughs> that's a, that's a victim blame here. But uh, I, I, I yeah, we're all <laughs> victims here. Self inflicted victims. <laughs> And obviously, of course, I would love more 100% newly tooled figures, as always. That goes without saying, but I'll say it again. And there absolutely could have been a better balance between new, partially new repaints and repacks in these reveals. Uh, but the year is young. I'll choose, as always, perhaps foolishly, to hope for more. As you just did the great uh, 2023 breakdown of how, you know, how many repaints, partial tools, repacks... And new figures came throughout the year. Um, always, We always want more new, but, um, you know, it takes time to kind of see where the year's going. It's, you know, we always say it's always right over the next hill. It's always around the net. We're like gamblers. You know, the next the next time I pull the lever, it's going to be the jackpot. But um, yeah. the year is young. We don't know what's coming out in the second half. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. And it's also very much something that, you know, I think I have said on this very show where it's don't let perfection be the enemy of progress where it's like, even though we do have frustrating days, uh, you know, some of us get more frustrated than others with stuff and some things on their face may look lazy or bad. Ultimately, if you pull out a little bit and again with the 2023 stuff, there is a lot of progress that you can measurable progress that you can look at and point to. And that is encouraging. Yeah. And that, and that's even if like, if you're like me and was being generous with some of the way it's, ways that things were counted, it looked great. But even if you break it down further and kind of separate out a couple of the things like, you know, waves that were from an earlier budget year or you yeah. know, removing small figures, there still is measurable progress moving the needle towards overall more newness and more attempts at newness in the line and a wider variety of offerings. Yeah. So again, don't love nothing but, you know, repacks and partial tools, but it's, you know, no. it's stuff we want. So that I want anyway, again, yeah. would love to see more newness mixed in there. I think that helps the, the pill go down easier. Yeah. And it's, but. it's hard when you want something like when they're like, they pipelined X and it's just like, Okay, not terribly exciting, but also, you know what? I do want Axe in his season three armor. Yeah. And then they do this and it's like, oh God, okay. Yeah. Yikes, I'm actually kind of mad because <laughs> the way you presented it was horrible. So Yeah. And uh Which leads into your next point, really. Yeah. So the you know, Mr. John Favreau, love you, but your secrecy continues to be super frustrating. I you know, I understand it's appreciate that he likes to keep surprises in the series. That that's important for the storytelling. 
But does everything need to be a surprise? We've said it before, but did we really need to wait a full year after Mandalorian Season 3 to get images of the main characters and random secondary characters that spoil absolutely nothing about the story? Would not have these... I can't even talk. I'm so <laughs> amped That's up. That's technically correct. Would not have these... Do I not bleed? <laughs> Would not these have maybe been more exciting or sold better closer to when the season actually aired, though? Is there anything that can actually be done to help this issue? You know, at Target, I recently saw a kids roleplay gauntlet, a Mando gauntlet with season three branding, the, the little branding that has Mando and a Bo-Katan and uh, Paz and the armor on up top. Uh, the first time I had seen that branding in the wild, a full year after that season has come and gone based on a piece of his armor he has worn all three seasons of the show has not changed maybe since like episode two and spoils absolutely nothing about the story um so that continues to be so frustrating and i will say they did a much better job are continuing to do a better job with the ahsoka series you know even if the white outfit was a secret they had to keep they, they're pie planning it a month or two after her show ended uh, it will you know we'll still take a while to get in the line i'm sure uh, anyway, I would love to see more of that going forward, less of wait a year and a half to even see anything from the show. Um, especially if there's going to be a Mando movie, we got to work something out, man. Like, come on, show him what the armor looks like. Don't tell him how he got it. Yeah. If Grogu's going to have a cool new haircut, can, can you at least show Hasbro and make him pinky promise not to leak it anywhere? Cause like we is, need this stuff. Is the movie going to be relevant. where we make the jump of Grogu being a puppet to CG? Oh, he CG sometimes. Well, I mean, like speaking of make the jump, aged up yeah. just a little bit, like a little bigger. I just CG, keep thinking of yeah. bringing it back to Marvel again. I keep thinking of Baby Groot moving into like Teen Groot. Yeah, and uh, I want like pimple faced, like uh, sulky uh, Grogu in the movie. That's what, that's what I'm looking for for that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, anyways, yeah. I I so, have I have thoughts, but dude, sorry, I didn't. Yes, mean to cut just you just one more thing on that, just because a lot of the Mando season three stuff is you know it's just the same characters we've already seen from the first two seasons. They're back. They might have a new shoulder pad. They might have a new jetpack. They might have a, you know, it's Malibu Stacy with a new hat situation. So if they are going to get stuff into the line, um, the easier stuff, even though it's still going to take a year, a year and a half to get them in, it's it's those main characters with their slightly different outfits. It's those, you know, background characters that don't spoil anything. So I think that's part of, you know, the, the content just kind of being outfits we've seen before. Uh, which does not make for super exciting figures. We, again, we saw that with the sequel trilogy, with the characters not only changing their clothes a lot, so all the figures are the same year after year. By the time they did change their clothes, Hasbro stopped making they figures stopped making for those figures. <laughs> So yes, just some of these problems we've seen before and that they keep uh, they keep happening. But anyway, yeah, that's enough out of me for now. No, I mean, really everything I have to say, uh, you, I agree with you. I, it, it, I'm basically just going to be kind of retreading your thoughts. You know, I... Do it. I... You know, I want to touch on here where it's it, it ties on to I've seen folks, the, the comments, especially around the time of March Madness, where, um, you know, there will be the stray comments here and there um, not to continue doing the thing where it's just like I saw a comment, which means everybody thinks this. Uh, it's just that I have seen a couple comments where people will criticize the community or criticize fan events such as Last Figure Standing and March Madness of being like, oh, it's just recency bias. You know. I feel like that's a little intellectually dishonest uh, or at least disingenuous. I, I guess what I'm wanting to touch on here is that it also, it just ties into folks putting on blinders and exaggerating how quote only new media gets the love and whatnot. Um, when it's, that's very much not true. Yes. The lion's share of the new tooling for completely new figures does go to new media because shocker, those things didn't exist in any capacity <laughs> before. Whereas, you know, Han Solo and what, what, whatnot, those have existed for decades. So it makes sense that there would be things that pull and, you know, reuse stuff granted to varying degrees of success. Han Solo is a prime example of, wow, they cut some corners there and really put out a disappointing figure when they should have and could have put out a definitive version. What, you know, yes. what, what would we have to sacrifice for that? I don't know. But anyway, you know, getting action figures for new Star Wars has always been baked into the DNA of the Star Wars experience. Action figures and toys were huge parts of how many, myself included, I'm sure many of you listening to this, John, I don't think Absolutely. it's out of line to assume that's probably part for you. Absolutely that's not. how we connected and enjoyed Star Wars in a way. So, you know, it's not our fault 
for those of us who want figures from new things, it's not our fault that Hasbro and LFL seem to have forgotten how it works. And they keep chasing these failed toy ideas and, you know, flavor of the week things and making tons of different toys across different formats and scales instead of having complete and meaningful offerings for new media, be it in TVC uh, or whatever collector lines, you know, they seem to be making a good effort of it for the Black Series, where there are far more complete teams and themes uh, for recent things. But mm. again, that's getting into the more balanced scale stuff. But, you know, they've instead opted to do barely anything from a lot of these new media sources, which then continues to create a huge backlog of of new stuff that gets in the way of updating the older stuff alongside of it, which is something that they also always have done in the line. There's always been the new stuff and there's always been, you know, the older things, the refreshes, the the new attempts at the updates at things Mm -hmm. that already exist. So it's ended up with TVC collectors especially being faced with weird would you rather scenarios. You know, I don't want to be I don't want to be glib and say Sophie's choice, but like uh, lose lose or Hobson's choice kind of things, yeah. uh, little dilemmas that they put us in where it's put to us as fans and collectors where it's just like, oh, you want the entire Bad Batch? Well, great. What would you sacrifice to get them? And it's just like, what are you talking about, dude? My firstborn <laughs> at this point, yeah. Yeah, like what? <laughs> yeah, that, that just seems so counter to the whole just experience of this. And I know I've railed on this before. I know I'm not saying anything new, and I'm sorry I'm coming off a little bit hot. It is just incredibly tiresome. And you know, I I sit there and I. I'm very excited for Cobb Vanth. I think that's super exciting. But by the time that figure is in hand, it will have been four years since he mm-hmm. debuted in his episode. Four years for a character that people saw instantly and were like, whoa, and it's in Boba yeah. Fett's armor. He looks it took like us action almost, figure man. Yeah. It took us two and a half years to get Luke Skywalker from the scene that lit the Star Wars internet fandom space ablaze. People were weeping and clapping and cheering and it took so long that, that by the time with, we got that happened the figure, with two similar luke skywalker scenes actually, exactly so. <laughs> you know so again that really just boils down you know it's, i i don't want to rant too much longer but it's really just about how lfl and hasbro keep failing themselves each other and us and putting collectors in these lose-lose scenarios and I I have to think it's incredibly damaging to, you know, the enthusiasm and the sustainability of these, forgive the word, iconic toy lines. So anyway, I don't know. Sorry, John. (laughs) No, well, I want to touch on a few things. I agree with that. Um, I think, you know, in terms of people talking about recency bias, um, I think people do want to buy stuff that's when it's like new and fresh and in their minds. Yeah. Um, Not... You know, there's always the classic stuff. You know, we grew up with the prequels. A lot of people grew up with the original trilogy. Those are always, those movies are always going to hold a special place in our heart. Perhaps the most special place in our heart. We always yeah. want new stuff from them. We are, we have thousands of things from them. We always want more. Um, but you know, if you're going to sell figures from these shows, it, to me personally, it makes the most sense to do it when it's kind of on. Like it would be, we said a hundred million times, but it would be nice to go. You watch Mando, you see the, oh, that, that Mandalorian fleet commander, he looks snazzy in that helmet. Let me walk into Target and buy that figure or go on Hasbro Pulse and buy that figure. No, you got to wait a year and before it, until everyone has kind of moved a year on. And best. For, yeah, in a lot of yeah. Scenarios. This is the best case scenario, yeah. <laughs> to pre- wait a year to pre-order him to get him in six months. Yeah, um, to be shown a pipeline of a reveal that'll happen five months later yeah. <laughs> of a product that will ship six months later. So. Yeah, so that's not great, but uh, it's also not great. No, but yeah, um, yeah but like you said, it, it, I don't like being in this in the Sophie's choice of you know, we should all be celebrating Star Wars action figure collecting all the time. It, it sucks that it's kind of at a place where a lot of people feel it's vintage versus black series. Some people feel it's you know old media versus new media. For when we, it, it should be enough for everybody. I would love to have waves of. Nothing but Attack of the Clones figures. I would love to have waves of nothing but Empire Strikes Back figures. Nothing but Ahsoka figures. Nothing but Book of Boba Fett figures. Retro gets that actually for some reason, but Vintage mm-hmm. Collection does not. They yeah, don't get anything was, else after yeah. that. After what they get one wave, two waves, and then <laughs> they get no more. So yeah. forget about that. But um, but it's very much part of the ethos, you know, that we say at the top of this very show every time the expansion of this line, yeah. you know, to be able to celebrate it, and so that it is, you know, fighting for 
this line that we've all that we all love and have dedicated and frankly irresponsible amount of time to advocating for uh the success of our personal relationships and jobs sometimes (laughs) Um, really advocating for this to be able to be a comprehensive and expansive offering like it once was in order to scratch the itch you know it's you're never going to make everyone happy but to have a line that has a meaningful amount of stuff for every different type of collectors from the more casual to the more Mm -hmm. i only want backgrounders from a 50 year old movie to the more i only want the new stuff to the more i don't watch cartoons anyone everyone there should be something and like you said you know and that was a huge struggle for me that i noticed really bad around like the sequels where you you couldn't get the things when you saw it that's it's yeah. just it's tough so and i know like yeah or, it was a huge bummer for you like when they announced balin and shin for black series um, yeah that that was a bummer and because that was it, even only yeah was that announcing them or pi- announcing them yeah not pipelining yeah. them so and, and we uh, can't even get a pipeline where we don't there's yeah. no guarantee that those figures will ever come for us because the further we get out from something the less likely it feels like it's going to be. Yeah. And especially if, you know, sorry, that's an impassioned speech. No, I was going to say, I, I love it. And I, uh, you were disappointed at that reveal. Uh, I, you know, I was kind of taken aback by how many comments, how much disappointment I saw online after some of these reveals. Again, maybe not. There's always disappointment. There's always people that are happy with stuff. Um, but, you know, it seemed like a lot of people were not thrilled with this stuff, which again, it was not the most thrilling pipeline or um, thrilling a fan stream they've ever done. So I get it. Um, You know, if you're only, you know, if you're looking forward to all the A New Hope stuff, it's not the most exciting that it's just Pilot Luke in the line. If you're looking forward to Mando Season 3 stuff, it's not the most exciting that it's just repacks and retools of stuff that uh, you're getting. Yeah. If you're looking forward to just Rex, I'm sure, you know, I know a lot of people say, gee, I wish he had the realistic belt or something. There's always something to nitpick. Yeah. There's always something to cry about. But um I don't know. Again, hopefully, hope or collections are built on hope. Rebellions are built on hope. We always want more. Um, hopefully, there's more coming before yes. too long. Yes. But and what, you know, how, how can we tell Hasbro what we want? How can we get the message out there? Always telling us to tell them what we want. That's exactly we, it. <laughs> is there a way we could do that? I have no idea. If only some highly motivated, but only in a specific facet of life, <laughs> people got together. <laughs> Yes. And put together ways that we could try, you know, to be vocal yes. about what we want, to come together as a community wherever possible, to give Hasbro as much confidence as we can to make the stuff that we feel is beyond obvious and overdue. Uh, you know, things like, I don't know, maybe a March Madness tournament. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like maybe. a last figure standing. Something know. like that. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So to, to take the chorus of complaints and turn it into something actionable, maybe, maybe that's something yes. we're trying to hoping to do here. Maybe I don't know. Take those woves woes and join yes. the chorus for Joris. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, at every possibility, you know, put out what you want. It's always fun. And again, going back to the positivity of wanting to celebrate this line and celebrating Star Wars, celebrating these figures. And and going back to the having to choose stuff where it's like anything and everything I want for this line, I don't want any of it at the expense of something else. I right. want it as well as the other stuff. So if there's something on my list that on my wish list that isn't on your wish list, it's not that I don't want what you want. It's that I want it all. We want it all. Yeah. We're greedy, man. So yeah. what a curse. <laughs> All that to say is if you haven't submitted your top 25 in this year's top 25 submission window for TBC March Madness 2024, please go and do that. The link to do so is spammed all over our Instagram. We will be putting that up in the story. It will be in the description of this episode, wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, whatever. It will be there. Submit your list. Help us shape the uh, shape of the bracket this year help us get that concrete data that you know if hasbro decides to peek in and look at as they say they do they can see hard numbers so they can see the enthusiasm they can see the engagement we are a very passionate community obviously screaming into microphones for an hour and a half about (laughs) figures we already have and are disappointed to see again (laughs) i love them so much that's why i can't wait to buy them again yes Yes. things like again and again not saying that 
We do know they look at it. They've stated that openly, not saying we cause these decisions for them or anything, not saying that we force these figures into the line, but it is very nice to see that, you know, Cobb Vanth was the 19th uh, figure who was on the 2023 bracket who is making it into uh, the line. Actually, is that true? I don't remember. Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. He's <laughs> yet another figure for, that has been on the bracket all three years. He is yet another figure from the 2023 bracket. Keep those requests, you know, keep the hope alive. Keep your voice loud and positive and nice, please. But, uh, you know, things pay off, even if yeah. it takes a long time. Yes. Uh, speaking of payoff, uh, did you know that we have a Patreon? I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> we Not to worry. I don't think we've really had anyone. However, I did notice uh, there's a couple folks out there that actually have just rejoined uh, that just signed up uh, for our Patreon. It's just a little small fee, like not fee. It's just a nice little thing there. We don't, we're not in this for the money. We don't make money on any of this. In fact, this is a money pit. SWTVC is a money hole for me. <laughs> um, but I do notice, I did notice a couple folks folks uh, join up and I just want to say, I think it's some of the same folks that also did it last year uh, just to kind of, I think, uh, kind of pass the hat and put a put a little bit of change in there to kind of help us out as we uh, do March Madness stuff. Totally unnecessary, but I completely appreciate you guys. Um, you know, got a, one of these days have, having a full time job, relationships, family, and stuff really does make some of this hard. We, I wish that SWTVC was a full time job, but also <laughs> I feel like I would hate everything even more. <laughs> um, but I do appreciate those of you that have signed up for the Patreon. This is not a call to action of more people do that. I just wanted to put that out there. I see you. I appreciate you. Um, and I want to figure out some way to give you guys a little nod. So, uh, I'll figure that out chat with the guys. We'll see. So, but thank you. I appreciate it, especially during the March Madness time. It helps us, uh, quote unquote, keep the lights on, uh, even though the lights are out in our eyes. Yes. So. I was doing math. That's why my light uh, was out. So just real <laughs> quick, just to set the record straight. Yes, Cobb is the 19th figure from the 2023 bracket. And he is the 14th, uh, actually 15th character who appeared uh, on all three brackets and has now been made. Cool. So. Just throwing he, that out there. He was on the now uh, now named Take a Hint Hasbro list. So Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see those uh, being chiseled away. So Yes, yes. So, all right. I think, John, do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, well, if you want to hear Tyler's thoughts on uh, yes. all these reveals and whatnot, um, he will be uh, joining uh, Tim from Bosque's Bounty on his live stream this weekend, if all goes to plan, I believe. So check that out on uh, Tim's YouTube channel. Uh, I believe John Miko and Chris Swanski will also be there. So to, be sure to tune into that and uh, tell Tyler what's up. If you want to hear Lewis's thoughts on the reveals, sorry about the time difference. Uh, send him a DM. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> it's always a lovely time talking to Lewis. So, uh, yes, so yes. Talk to Lewis. Uh, <laughs> that's the new hashtag. Talk yes. to Lewis. <laughs> uh, and just to don't, kind don't of. Don't talk to me. Don't DM me. I have enough <laughs> stuff going on with March Madness right now. Actually, you know what? Yes. Yes, DM John. Yes, DM me. Just to go back to something we touched on at the very beginning of the show, but it's worth repeating. Uh, your top 25 submission list is editable until the end of the month, until January 31st. So if you do need to make changes to your top 25 list. Uh, Such as removing Cobb Vanth. Yes. Uh, rewind the episode to listen to the instructions on that. But if you are unable to do it via the email link, or if you didn't get the email the first time and you do resubmit, uh, just be sure you're doing it from the same email. And then please either send myself or John a DM uh, on Instagram probably, or Facebook, whatever. Uh, we are at Mile High Ground and at The Vintage Concepts, or take a shot, throw it at SWTVC and see how Tyler reacts to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just let us know if you do resubmit your list. Uh, we do have a monumental task larger than the previous year's efforts of data to go through, uh, again, a uh, thousand some lists and counting so far. Huge thank you to everyone out there again. Huge thank you to our friends and allies in the community for also helping to rally around this kind of stuff. And, you know, not only keeping hope alive, but as always, keeping <gasps> 375 alive. Wow. Yes. Smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as smooth as I wanted it to be, but <laughs> it's whatever. So, yeah. 
Bring it home. On that note, I think that does it for this episode of the SWTVC podcast. As always, keep 375 alive. Back TVC. Finish the 96. Balance the scales, Hasbro. Hu Yang Gang for life. And may the force be with you. 